ओम गुम गणपत नम ओम गुम गुरुभ्यो नम ओम शं सरस्वते नम ओं सहनाव सह नौ भुन सह वीर्यम करवाहे तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाषावे ओं शाति शाति जयति जगति मया यधवस्ते वचन रचनमेक कवल चाकलय ध्रुवपदमी याद यो ध्रुवो सकलकुशल पात्र ब्रह्मपुत्र I think, so I am, is the base of Western philosophy. I am, so I think, is the base of Indian philosophy. these two words but it shows a lot of difference in these two kinds of philosophies in bharata philosophy is not some speculation some thought some noble thought some deep thinking in bharata philosophy is darshanam The word for philosophy in Bharata is darshanam. Darshayati iti darshanam. What is darshanam? What is philosophy in India? Darshayati. Darshayati. That which shows. Kim darshayati? Margam darshayati. So Bharatiya darshana is marga darshakam. That which shows us the path. Marga. मार्ग पाथ फॉर वाट लौकिक पारमाक जीवन सुखेन साधय मार्ग पाथ फॉर वाट वाट पाथ लौकिक पारमाक जीवन सुखेन साधय मार्ग द पाथ विच हेल्प us to fulfill a complete life here and hereafter laukikam of this world paramarthikam the absolute so they, they say that there are two things in our life which is one is sort of vyavaharika the other the other one is paramarthika and darshana is that which shows us to have a complete life so darshana is not just some you know thinking some thoughts or some arguments or some conclusion some theories on some you know no this is a path this is something which shows us the path now how this philosophy shows us the path through mimamsa so other word we hear in a philosophical class is mimamsa what is mimamsa the word meaning of mimamsa is mantum ichha what is mimamsa mantum ichha desire to no mantum ichha the desire to know that's it acha okay so through mimamsa darshana try to show us the path now in our bharatiya darshan there are three kinds of mimamsas one is known as karma mimamsa what is karma mimamsa karma mimamsa means that which shows the philosophy of karma kanda 
Karmakanda? What is Karmakanda? Yeah, we studied that on one of, one of our Bhagavad class. We discussed Karmakanda doesn't mean, you know, doing worship or puja or anything. Karmakanda means perform yaga, yajna, etc. Through that Karmakanda, you gain a lot of punya. And then with that punya, we go to Surga. Stay there as much as possible. And when our punya kshaya happens, come back. Again, work. <laughs> So, karma mimamsa are of two in our Bharatiya Darshana. One is known as Jaiminiya Purva Mimamsa and Bharadwaja Karma Mimamsa Darshana. Mimamsa. 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 First is known as Karma Mimamsa. Karma Mimamsa of two, mainly there are two Mimamsas which are thinking about the Karma Kanda. Karma Kanda. Karma Kanda, the first portion of the Vedas includes Samhita and Brahmana. Okay. So, that is known as Karma Mimamsa. What are the Karma Mimamsa? Two Karma Mimamsa are there. One is known as Purva Mimamsa of, of Jaimini. And second is, what is the name of second, second Karma Mimamsa? Bharadwaja. Karma Mimam Sadarsanam. Of Bharadwaja. Not Bharadwaja, Bharadwaja, okay? Bharadwaja means the son of Bharadwaja. So, Bharadwaja Rishi, a great Rishi, no, it was a, a Sampradaya Pravartaka, also a, you know, a, 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 a Gotra Pravartaka. Bharadwaja Gotra is a very, you know, common Gotra in Bharata. So, Bharadwaja Rishi has written Karma Mimamsa Darshanam. So, both of them, Puru Mimamsa and Karma Mimamsa explains the, explains the Karma Kanda of Vedas. Then comes the Jnana Mimamsa. Jnana Mimamsa, all of us are very familiar with the Jnana Mimamsa. Jnana Mimamsa means what? Mimamsa of Jnana, which includes the Upanishad part of the, of the Vedas. So this Jnana Mimamsa is, is also there in Bharata. Jnana Mimamsa is also of two, you know, paths or two Great works are there in Jnana Mimamsa. One is very much familiar or very famous known as Brahma Sutram. Who composed Brahma Sutram? Ah, Veda Vyasa Rishis, Brahma Sutra. So, Brahma Sutra is Jnana Mimamsa. No, the Sutras are known as Brahma Sutra. This Brahma Sutra is Jnana Mimamsa, like that. Siddhanta Darshanam. Another path is also there. Siddhanta Darshanam. Actually, we do not know much about the Siddhanta Darshanam. Only Siddhanta Darshanam appears in many books. Okay. So, Siddhanta Darshanam is believed to be by Veda Vyasa. Brahma Sutra. And Siddhanta Darshanam, both are Jnana Mimamsa. Siddhanta Darshanam. What is the Darshana or what is the Siddhanta of, of Jnana Mimamsa? 
So in Brahma Sutra, what happens? Only Chatus Sutri, the first four sutras are directly, you know, enumerating the different uh, Vedanti concepts. Then all the different different things it goes. But in Siddhanta Darshan, it's believed that Vedavyasa has taken up all these, you know, points of the uh, Vedanta Shastra and explained. But that book is not available nowadays in full thing. Only here and there in Acharya's quote. They quote and from quote only we know that such a book existed. So that is known as Siddhanta Darsana. This is also Jnana Nimans. Now from the Jnana Kanda, now comes the Upasana Kanda. So in Veda there are three Kandas, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda and Upasana Kanda. In Upasana Kanda also, there are great three words which explains the, the you know, essence of Upasana, known as, one is known as Madhyami Mamsa, Adava Daivi Mamsa, Madhyami Mamsa, or Daivi Mamsa. By Angiras. Angirasa. Angiras Rishi has composed a Mimamsa known as Madhya Mimamsa or Devi Mimamsa. Second is Bhakti Sutra by Chandilya. Chandilya Bhakti Sutra. Third is Narada Bhakti Sutra. Madhya Mimamsa or Devi Mimamsa, Chandilya Bhakti Sutra, Narada Bhakti Sutra. Like these three sutras, these three works are uh, talking about the Upasana Mimamsa. Only three things in the Veda. Karma, Upasana, Jnana. Karma, Upasana by, Karma by the Purva Mimamsa and uh, Bharadwaja Mimamsa. Then Jnana by Bhagavan in the Veda Vyasa. Upasana Kanda by Madhya Mimamsa, Angira Srishi. Now, this Madhya Mimamsa or Daivi Mimamsa is a very technical text. Very technical, very um, logical and logical, more than logical, say very technical text which, uh, you know, like like the Brahma Sutra which, uh, you know, goes into the deeps of the, deep aspects of the, of the Upasana. And Madhya Mimamsa or Devi Mimamsa is more related to Vaidika Upasana than the, you know, now existing Upasana. Vaidika Upasana was very different. Aranyakas and then Aranyaka Upasana, Madhuvidya, very different. Now comes Chantilya Bhakti Sutra. This book is available. It's believed that Pujya, Pujya our uh, Param Guru Pujya Tapovan Maharaj has actually done some work on this Chantilya Bhakti Sutra, but not available. And then comes Narada Bhakti Sutra. Now, Chantilya Bhakti Sutra is Kadinam. Any, any, have you seen this book? It's available. Chandilya Bhakti Sutra is available, but Kadinam. It's a little tough. You know that the way of uh, expression, the essence of expression is very tough. So, then comes the third one, Narada Bhakti Sutra. Okay. So, Jnana, the, the like not what is what, Darshanam. Darshana is based on Mimamsa. Mimamsa are of three kinds. Karma Mimamsa, Jnana Mimamsa and Upasana Mimamsa. In Upasana Mimamsa also there are three, three paths. Which one is Madhya Mimamsa or Daivi Mimamsa, Bhakti Darsana of Sandilya and Narada Bhakti. So today we will start Narada Bhakti Sutra. When it will end? The one only does. So we will start. Anyhow, good things should be started. Then other things are in Bhagavan's hands. Okay. So today we start.
we are about to start, we are going to start the Narada Bhakti Sutra. So, we should know, okay, we should not, sometimes people feel that this Bhakti Darsanas, etc. is out of Darsanas, etc. No, this is also part of Darsana. Okay, so Darsana, Mimamsa, three kinds of Mimamsas, Upasana Mimamsa, three kinds of Upasana Mimamsa, in that our Narada Bhakti Sutra. Now comes this word Narada Bhakti Sutra. Narada, one word. Bhakti, another word. Sutra. Narada Bhakti Sutra. Okay. I can speak it in this way, you know. Is it clear? Is it clear when I speak? So, what is the meaning of Narada? Narada means what? We have studied, you know, in Bhagavad class. Ah, what is the, there are different meanings for Narada. First meaning is Naram Adhyatma Vishayakam Jnanam. Naram means Adhyatma Vishayakam Jnanam. Paramatma Vishayakam Jnanam. Naram means. Naram Dadati Iti Narada. Who is Narada? Naram Dadati. The one who gives us Naram. Narada. The, we studied, no? Like Jaladaha. What is the meaning of Jaladaha? Jalam Dadati. Like that. Like that. Narada means Naram. Paramatma Vishayakam Jnanam, Adhyatma Vishayakam Jnanam Dadati Iti Narada. So, who is Narada? Narada is that Guru who gives us the supreme knowledge of the Self. So, that is the one meaning of Narada. Next meaning of Narada is, Naram also means Jalam, water. So, Narada means the one who gives us water. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Naram means Jeeva Jalam, Bhakti. The one who gives us the, the, na, the water of the life or that, the water which gives us life, that, that water which quenches our thirst, that, what is that Jeeva Jala? That is Bhakti. So, who is Narada? Bhakti Rupam Jalam Dadati Iti Narada. Who is Narada? Narada is the one who gives us the waters. What kind of waters? That the waters which is of the nature of, of Bhakti. So, Bhakti Rupam Jalam Dadati Iti Narada. Now, there is a third meaning. That is, Naram Ahankara di Bhaditam Narasamuham Dyati Khantayati Iti Narada. Who is Narada? Narada means, <laughs> this is the famous meaning. You know, Narada means the one who makes quarrel, one who put, you know, Dyati means Khantayati. But Narada never do the Ghantana of people, good people. Why Narada makes all the Kalaha? Kalaha, Kalaha Priyo Narada, they say. Why Kalaha, where Kalaha? If you read the Purana, we'll understand that. Ahankara di Bhajitam Narasamuha. He never makes any quarrel between good people. When our mind is filled with Dhana, Jana, Yauvana, Garuvam. Makuru, Dhana, Jana, Yauvana, Garuvam. When our heart is filled with, you know, Dhanu Jana go. So, when Bhagavan wanted to bless them by removing that Garuva. So, Naradam, Naram means Ahankara di Bhajitam Narasamuha Khandayati. The one who breaks, the one who destroys the ego, etc. from the mind of people. Whatever he is doing is for that only. 
And you will see that if you read the Purana, wherever Bhagavan Narada interfered, those people became blessed afterwards. So, that is Narada. We have already heard the story of Narada. Remember, just two, three days back only. So, Narada was actually in the last, last day of Brahmaji, Narada was a, was a Gandharva. His name was Upabarhana. We should have a kiss. Then only we will have. Upabarhana Narada. Upabarhana was a Gandharva, but then he also became, you know, intoxicated with Dhanajana Yovanagarva. So, he was cursed by the Prajapatis. So, that he was born as a Dasi Putra. But, when he was reborn as Dasi, Dasi Putra because of his, you know, qualities of the previous birth, he was a very calm, quiet child. And, when he was just five years old, he had, had the, you know, Saubhagya of, of Satsanga. Those Rishis came there for Chaturmasya, they blessed him, gave him Mandra Diksha, everything. And when they left, after some time, his mother also passed away. So, he went to the forest and did uh, tapas and as a small child itself, he had the darshan of Bhagavan. Then he always wanted to have Bhagavan darshan, but because of Papa, he could not have that. But he always remembered Bhagavan and lived that life and at the end, he reached Vaikundha, he became a you know, sevaka of Bhagavan and stayed in Vaikundha. And when that day ended, the jiva entered into Brahmaji and today of Brahma, of this Kalpa, he became, he manifested himself as the Putra, Manasa Putra, Prana, from this Prana, Prana of Brahmaji, uh, along with Maricha, the uh, uh, Maricha Drishis, Sri Narada Riya. He reappeared, he studied. Now, Brahmaji himself taught, taught him Aparadhyaya. Yudhishtha, all this, Shiksha, Kalpa, Vyakrana, Chanda, Nirukta, Rudhuveda, Jiruveda, Samaveda, Dharveda, everything. But, all those he, he learned, but he was not satisfied. Mantra videva hamasmi. I only know mantra. I have no knowledge of Atma. No, Atma I have heard that Ah, if, you know, if you, uh, you realize Atman, then you all fears will go away. But still, I have fear in my heart. Oh, Bhagavan, he went to the, his elder brothers and said, Ah, Shokasya Param, you know, Paraya. Oh, my dear Gurus, please take me beyond this samsara, beyond the Dukkha. And, uh, they blessed him with the Bhuma Vidya. That also we listened last class. Bhuma Vidya was given to them. The seventh chapter of Chandogya Upanishad. Whenever you get some time, please read that. There, you know, what is Bhuma? Yadalpam. You know, uh, yad, uh, Nalpe Sukhamasti. You know, Bhuma Vai Sukham. It was beautifully, this entire Atma Tattva was given to Narada. So, Shravana happened. But Shravana is not enough. He went and meditated for hundred years in Himalaya. Himalaya, he meditated in hundred years. And when, you know, hundred years were over, Tato Varshasate Purne Bhagavan Loka Bhavana Radhuschakara Vishwatma Rushe Paramasauhrudad. Because of that great love, with great love, Bhagavan Narada worshipped Bhagavan. And Bhagavan appeared in his heart as his self. And whatever he learned from his gurus, it became his direct experience. Now, he studied Aparavidya, he learned Paravidya, and that Paravidya became his Anubhuti. Now, he has done what is to be done in life, he went back to his father. And father, Brahmaji, gave him Bhagavata Upadesha. Bhagavata Sara, not the entire Bhagavata, but Bhagavata Sara was given to him. And he said, Idam Bhagavatam Nama, Yenme Bhagavato Didam, Sangaho Yam Vibhuti Nam, Tvamedat Vipuli Kuru. Sangraha, what I am, I gave you, he said, essence of the Bhagavata. From where you got this? 
I got this Bhagavata from Bhagavan. So Bhagavan gave me the Bhagavata. Eh? Ramaji is telling to Narada. So that Bhagavata, the essence of Bhagavata, eh? now I give to you. Now what you should do? Ah, now you have a duty. What that? We pulli we do. Now whatever is given to you in essence, now you have to expand this. What? Bhagavata. So, the Bhagavata Shastra, the Shastra of Bhagavan is to be ex expanded by you. This is your duty. Not only just expand and sit a place, go on and on. And then, Yadahara Bhagavati, Nranam Bhaktir Bhavishyati, Sarvatmanya Giladhare, Idi Sanchindya Nishchitya Varnaya. Go to each and every place. And then see how people are. If those people want the karma, tell him that, tell them that if you want to fulfill your karma, worship Hari. Now some other people want some kind of artha, you know, things. Oh, you want artha, wealth, please worship Hari. Some people want, you know, some jnanam. You want some knowledge, worship Hari. Some people actually want Bhagavan only, worship Hari. So, there is only one, whether you want you know, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, what you should do? Ah, Bhagavaneva bhajaniya sarvatmani agiladhare yadha nrinam bhakti bhavishyati. You should go, you are the missionary, the first missionary, go to each and every world. Find people, give them this knowledge and not... Help them to develop bhakti for Bhagavan. This is your life mission. He did this. Once he saw that very young boys, they were all, thousand, ten thousand of them, they were all sitting in a, you know, in a tirtha and doing tapas. Who are you? Oh, we are all, no, Hajiyashwaha. <laughs> oh, we are the sons of the Kshapradhyapati. Very good. Why are you? What are you doing? We are doing tapas. Why? Because our father said that now you have to do tapas and get a lot of media so that you can create so many people in this world. Father said, what a foolish thing you are doing. In order to, you, you are doing tapas for alpha. If you are doing tapas, you do that tapas for the greatest in world. Not to gain these small, small things. And he gave them Upadesha and all of them became sannyasins. 10,000 sannyasins. They all left the world. They meditated upon Bhagavan and then became, you know, become Mukta Purusha. <laughs> Daksha Prajavati came to know this. What is this? Huh? Okay. He again created 10,000 more. <laughs> they are known as Sabalashwa. They also went for tapas. There also Narada came and all those Sabalashwas also became sannyasins. Narada became, uh, Daksha became very angry, cursed him. Ha! You are able to give all this Upadesha because you are able to stay in a place. No, from this day onwards, you will not be able to stay in a place for a long time. Cursed him. He became very happy. Now I can go anywhere, see everywhere I can just roam around. Instead of staying in one place, now I can... Travel all this universe and then, you know, I can do the Hadikata Prajara. He became very happy. <laughs> now, and you know, we have seen, we will see in Bhagavata also, uh, he met a small boy, he, you know, grandson of the Manu, very angry looking, five years old. Hmm? Like him, just, where are you going? I am going to do tapas. Think about a small boy. Uh -huh. Oh, what? Oh, so that I can sit on the, my you know, mother said that if I want to sit in the my father's lap, then I should be born as her son. Huh? I want to sit. My dear, you are such a small child, small baby. You know, see, father and mother say so many things like that. Don't take it all for, you know, serious. Go back, play with your toys. Said, oh, that. Oh, Brahmana, oh, Brahmana, you may do all those things. I am a Kshatriya. If I keep a you know, food friend, 
I shall not return. This is my brother. Five year old cute boy is telling this. I have understood this is Uttama Adhita. He himself took you know, that child to the Madhuvana. What he will know? Small child, that thing he know. But so much of love was there, was created in the heart of Narada. Narada took him to Madhuvana and made a small kudiya for this shishya and then gave him the Vadashakshari Mandropadesha and did everything for the child within six months. Bhagavan came and stood in front of the child and he did not open his eyes. You know, that was, that was the Dhruva. That's a Shishya. That Dhruva was able to, you know, Yadkrupato Dhruvoyam. You know, because of whose Krupa, Dhruva became Dhruva. And Prahlada, we know. Prahlada story also. Prahlada. <laughs> Is, is, is the embodiment of bhakti. He created all these bhakti shastras, but there was not even one person who was perfect. So he wanted to make a perfect example for bhakti. And that's why he, when Kayadhu was dragged by uh, Indra, hmm, <laughs> he took her and then kept her in Mukti. He actually had a curse that he cannot stay in a place. But he stayed for a long time to protect Kayadu. That means he is all tapasya, all the tashapa, etc. will not affect them when they want. <laughs> so he, you know, gave all this, this Bhakti Padesha to Kayadu. But Kayadu was thinking about her husband. Then he will come, so staying in this ashram. Oh, no food, no salt, no nothing. Mm -hmm. But the child was. So, the Prahlada became Prahlada because of Narada. Now, there was a, you know, there was a, <laughs> um, you know, thief. And his name was, uh, Jatnakara. Jatnakara became, uh, Sakshat Adi Kavi. Vantmiki. Because of whom? Because of Narada. He is the one who gave him Ramopadesha, Mantropadesha, and also after that, when he became a Rishi, he came and then gave him the, the essence of Ramayana. And at hearing that, the Rishi made the entire Ramayana. So, Vantmiki is actually his Sishya. Now, we heard last time in Bhagavad also, no? Vyatavyasa uh, was sitting without any happiness because the fulfillment was not there. He came. Who came? Ah, came and then gave him Upadesha because of whom he wrote Bhagavad. So, if you see anywhere, without, without uh, Narada, our Bharatiya Purana or Bharatiya Itihasa or even Vedas are incomplete. I was telling you before also, in the Rigveda etc., there are many, many mantalas seen by Narada Rishi. Narada is the Rishi. Narada is actually the Vaidika Rishi also. Anyhow, such a person is Narada. Narada. So, what are the you know works of Narada? The Narada's works starts from Veda. As I was telling, there are many many mandalas in Rigveda which are seen by Bhagavan Narada. So, Narada is a Rigvedi, a Rushi. And also there are Upanishads which are you know related to Narada. Like Narada Parivrajaka Upanishad. Very famous Upanishad. Narada Parivrajaka Upanishad. So, this Upanishad is mainly talking about sannyasa. What is sannyasa? How we should do sannyasa? All that thing. So, Narada Parivrajaka Upanishad is also Narada. And then there is one Puranam known as Naradiya Puranam. This Narada is not a small person. Narada is there in the Veda. Narada is the Upanishad. Narada, there is one Purana where Narada is the main character, known as Naradiya Purana. And then there is also, we heard, you know, when we are talking about Narada, we heard about Panjaratra. Narada Panjaratram, which is a tantrika text, where Narada is explaining the uh, practical aspects of spirituality. 
even how to build a temple, how to do the prana pradishta, how to do, you know, worship Bhagavan every day, how to worship the Utsavas, you know, what are the sadhanas we should do as a, as a, as a member, as a vyakti and as a samuha. Very detailed varnanas are there in the book Narada Panjaratram. Narada Panjaratra is a, is a tantric text. Tantric, please don't think much of black magic, I have already explained. The practical handbook is known as Tantra. Now, there is a Smriti. Narada Smriti. 18 Smritis are there. We only hear about Manusmriti, Manusmriti. But there are 18 Smritis. And one of the Smriti is Narada Smriti. What is Smriti? Law books. Smriti means what? Law books. How to live, you know, how to... Uh, uh, the law book is known as Smriti. So, Narada Smriti is there. And then, Naradiya Shiksha is there. To chant Veda, how to chant Veda? Shiksha means Ucharana Shastram. So, Naradiya Shiksha. How to chant Vedas in the proper manner? It's also there. And Naradi, there is a beautiful book known as Sangeeta Makarandam. Have you heard this book? Sangeeta Makarandam. It's believed that uh, Narada appeared in front of Yagaraja as a Brahmana and gifted him this book. She said, you know, there was some, you know, cover covered some Grantha was there in this Brahmana's hand. He gave this to um, Akshal Tyagaraja Swami and then he said, I am going to take bath. If I don't come, you open this. What? Yes. <laughs> I am going to take bath and then when, if I am not returning, please open this book. And the Brahmana did, never came back and then he was not actually worried. Who? Takaraja Swami. What is happening? Oh, something happened to him, whether he has, you know, drowned in the water or anything. But then he had the darsana of Bhagavan. No, Narada said that the Brahmana was myself. You opened the book. And he opened the book and he saw that that is known as Sangeeta Makaranda. Composed by Sri Narada himself. Say, high classic, you know, about the classical music and then Raga, Tala, Allavi, all this, you know, which was almost lost, came back through the Sangeeta Makaranda and then, of course, she, you know, Jagaraja Swami enlivened the classical music of India. So, that's why Narada is still there. Sangeeta Makaranda. See how, in which which areas, there is no area of Shastra which he has not, you know, contributed. Then comes the most famous book known as Narada Bhakti Sutra. Narada Bhakti Sutra. So, we saw so that Narada Bhakti Sutra is the Mimamsa of Upasana. Okay, so Narada, the word Narada for clear. Now, what is the next word? Next word is Bhakti. Of course, Swamiji, we know what Bhakti. What is Bhakti? Bhakti means <laughs> Devotion. Says, what is Bhakti? So, we learn something about Narada. Now, next word is Bhakti. <clears throat> the word Bhakti originates in three ways. The word Pada Bhakti comes from three levels. One is Bhagat Bhakti. Bhajanat Dava Sevayam Bhakti. Third, Bhanjanat The word bhakti is coiled or formed from three levels. One is known as bhagat. 
वॉट यू मीन बाई भाग है भाग है हियर भाग मीन्स पार्टी पार्टी मीन्स आई एम नो आई एम विथ कांग्रेस पार्टी और यू आर आई एम विथ कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी नो सो भाग है आई बिलोंग टू सो वेन आई से दैट आई एम इन कांग्रेस पार्टी मीन्स वॉट I believe the you know the the ideals of Congress Party or Communist Party or BJP or something. So, see, I belong to. So, what is bhakti? The most important thing in bhakti is belongingness. We start to feel that I belong to Bhagwan. No, that's why we have different bhakti. We have prema bhakti. We have Vatsalya Bhakti, we have Sakyam, we have ah, Sakya Bhakti, we have Dasa Bhakti, no, we have Shanta Bhakti. Different Bhaktis are there. This is based on the Bhagat. Bhagat means we feel that I belong to God. Most important thing in Bhakti is that, that belongingness, I belong to Bhagavan. In Dasya Bhakti, I feel that I am the servant and Bhagavan is my master. In Vatsalya Bhakti, I feel that I am the mother or I am the father and Bhagavan is my child. In, in uh, Sakya, he is my dear friend. Okay? Then, then in the you know, Madhura Bhakti, he is my beloved. So, there is a bhag, I belong to him. No, he is mine and his. So, that is bhakti. So, bhaga te bhakti. So, when I feel that I belong to Bhagavan, then what do I do? Seva. Now, how the love manifests? The love manifests through seva. We want to do something. If you love a person, you, you always think, how can I you know, serve that person? That thought comes. So like that, when I feel that I belong to Bhagavan, then bhajanat bhakti hi. <laughs> bhakti is not doing something because somebody tells, do japa or do puja, otherwise was something. No, it comes from inside. I want to do something for Bhagavan. No, Sevayam, I want to serve the Lord. How to serve? Sravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Achanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam So, how to serve? Serving is only not only cooking food or taking care of Bhagavan or doing puja. These are all good. <coughs> but, Sravanam, I love to hear about him. Kirtanam, I want to sing. Smaranam, I want to remember Bhagavan. <laughs> no? Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, I want to worship him. Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam, total surrender to Bhagavan. So that is Bhajanat, Sevayam, Bhakti. Then, then comes Bhanjanat Bhakti. Bhanjan means to destroy. Huh? Bhakti destroys. Yes. So, be careful. Okay. Before entering into this path, careful. Be a you no know, warning. What is that? The moment we enter into this, 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 this path of bhakti, we lose interest for everything else. Once our heart is filled with the parabhakti, then, then what happened? All kinds of samsara, you know, samsara bandha or bandhana or, uh, you know, raga, dvesha, everything is destroyed. The samsara is destroyed. And bhakti has this power to destroy, to eliminate all kinds of negativities or jiva bhavana from our so, bhanjanat, bhanjanat, that which destroys, that which eliminates. What it eliminates? Avidya. The avidya or asmita or raga, dvesha, abhinivesaha, all the things, all the negativities, 
in essence jiva buddhi that i am a jiva itself is eliminated in the parab only difference is in a bhakta's heart he and he alone is there i am not there in the path of jnana i alone is there. is that true no but in bhakti what happens is the you know the entire shraddha is on bhagwan tat tat pad pradhanyam and jnana is tum pad pradhan but at the end both are same so that's why it's known as bhakti now this bhakti can be classified into different parts so what is bhakti what is the you know, what is the meaning of this word bhakti we have seen bhakti can be you know seen from different levels one is known as para bhakti another is known as apara bhakti we we'll start from apara bhakti <laughs> apara bhakti means you no know, which is not the highest apara bhakti is of two kinds one is gauna bhakti another is mukhya bhakti apara bhakti of two kind one is gaunam another is mukhya so gauna bhakti and an mukhya bhakti are known as apara bhakti now what is this uh, uh, gauna bhakti means gauna bhakti means ha uh, preparatory period and mukhya bhakti is uh, so gauna bhakti is preparatory preparatory what do you mean by that every day getting up thinking about bhagwan we go to the temple and worship bhagwan every day we do you know we do the puja we do japa actually nothing happens <laughs> nothing happens in this there is no bhaga also is not there there is no bhanjana also is not there no seva also there but we make it a point that we do all these things because that is known as gauna that's the beginning so when every day we do japa we do sadhana although this kind of feeling what narada bhakti sutra etc telling that kind of oneness or feeling for bhagwan is not there still we practice we go to the temple we do japa we do puja everything that is known as gauna bhakti it's a preparatory period without the preparatory period it is not possible to have the para bhakti many people say you know nowadays especially what is the point of going to temple god is everywhere god is in me god is this all just talk okay so it is very very important in our life that we actually practice the gauna bhakti even though we don't feel much even though that kind of uh, you know fulfillment is not coming by japa but we should do japa we are not feeling connected with bhagwan again still we should do puja why because without gauna bhakti it is very very difficult to develop the real bhakti yes what you are telling is hey sure right no because you have all this gauna bhakti but this all are you showing but nothing is yes but by that doing that you no know, practicing that maybe with janma janma janmantara gauna bhakti anushtane na mukhya bhakti comes what is mukhya bhakti mukhya bhakti is when you are really doing abhishek to bhagwan you you check the water is it very cold before we don't even think eh huh? because uh, abhishek has to be done we do abhishek but so in the very like you know very in the winter also we use so much of uh, you know cold water for bhagwan for shiva it's okay but uh, you know but then we feel that the water is we feel that whatever i am doing i am doing to bhagwan not that bhagwan has appeared or anything but a kind of feeling a kind of connection a kind of love a kind of you know a kind of togetherness that starts to appear 
So no more, we are going to temple, no more just to have a, we are, many people know this, they go for temple, why? So that it is a good uh, exercise, you know. <laughs> why are you going to temple? You have good exercise. That, but at least good, not going to a park and then all this, you see, it's better to go there, but that is Gauna. But then, when you start to feel that, when you go to the temple, you are actually seeing Bhagavan. You feel that you are no more seeing a idol or anything, you see, you feel very happy. You know, and, uh, and you know, when you are cooking something, you want to cook the best things. You are offering some fruits, generally how you offer? But then you want to, you know, peel off the uh, skin and then you want to cut it. Because, see, if somebody gave us like that, how will he eat? And this small baby, how can he eat with all this? So, we slash to make it. See, this is known as Mukhya Bhakti. We start to really feel that Bhagavan is there. We have not experienced him. But we, we feel that he is there. Whatever uh, Anushthana I am doing, it is really, you know, connected with that. That is known as Mukhya Bhakti. When Sri Ramakrishna says that Mukhya Bhakti is like the, you know, before the sunrise, if you see the eastern uh, um, skies, you will see a kind of red color, known as Aruna Udayam. Sun is not come. But, like, uh, you know, we know that uh, Aruna Udaya happened. No, the sun is going to appear. Shortly like that, when Mukhya Bhakti, when we start to, you know, when you hear Bhagavan's stories, you know, your eyes are filled with tears, you know, when you hear uh, or when you see Bhagavan, you you have the romanja, the Bhagavan's vigraha, etc. also, whatever we are doing, little bit, little bit of our upasanas, we feel like actually, you know, not as a job or a work or a, you know, a, just a thing, we start to feel. That is known as Mukhya Bhakti. When these two happen, Gauna Bhakti and then Mukhya Bhakti, then comes the Parabhakti. Parabhakti is the, uh, the what is Parabhakti? Transcendental. We cannot actually say what is Parabhakti. So Parabhakti is of two kinds. One is subjective and objective. Subjective and objective. Subjective means what? Vayyaktika Parabhakti. What is Vayyaktika Parabhakti? We do not know. No? What is this Parabhakti is actually happens when para Parabhakti comes to us? How, how we feel? We will study in uh, Narada Bhakti Sutra, Anirmuva Chaniya Rupa. What is this Parabhakti? What is the supreme transcendental devotion you are talking about? Only Mukha Swadavate. This like, you know, you <coughs> somebody gave you a, a very uh, tasty kheer, ayasam, and you have that. And then somebody asks you, oh, I heard that you got a very nice ayasam today. How was it? Explain. Oh, it was madhuram. Madhuram like what? <laughs> See, we can't even say the taste of, taste of ayasam. To talk about the taste of Paramatma, Ananda Swarupa. So, as subjective, it is Anirvachan. As objective, it is Bhakta Lakshan. So, what is Parabhakti? As objective, it is Bhakta Lakshan. We do not, we can actually, we cannot actually explain what the bhakti is in subjective manner, but then how we will know what is para bhakti? Uh -huh. Then they say uh, there is bhakta lakshanas are given. Advesta sarva bhutanam maitra karuna evacha nirmamo nirahangaraha samadukha sukhakshani. We will study in the 12th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Amrita ashtaka, which is known as Amrita ashtaka by Naneshwar Maharaj, called that the Amrudashtaka, the eight uh, verses of Amruta. Now, Advesta Sarabhudanam starts from the 12th chapter, the uh, eight verses are there, which is, which is the Bhakta Lakshana, that Bhakta Lakshana is the objective face of Parabhakta. Subjectively, we, do, we will not be able to. If you ask a Bhakta, 
Parabhakta. What is it? They say Parama Prema. No, what is it, Parama Prema? Hmm. So that is we'll discuss because the entire book is on this Parabhakti. So that is known as the Narada Bhakti. More things no, we will learn when <laughs> next comes the word sutra. This is okay. Bhakti, Parabhakti, Aparabhakti. Aparabhakti is Gauna and Mukhya. Parabhakti as subjective is Anuruvajaniyam. As objective is Bhakti Lakshana. Now comes the last word, Sutra means. Our uh, Bharatiya, you know, Bharatiya tradition, all the jnana starts from sutra. Any, whether it is, whether it is karma, whether it is jnana, whether it is bhakti, whether it is yoga, whether it is sangya, whether it is any shastra, it all starts from sutram. So there is uh, yoga Sutra. You know, there are Vyakarana Sutra. We studied some Sutras. Remember any Sutra? Vyakarana Sutra? Ego, Yanachi, Akasavar, Nehidirgaha. So these are all eh? no? Maheshwara Sutras. Okay. So these are all Sutra. What is Sutra? This is the definition of sutra. Please repeat. Alpaksharama sandigdham Sadavat vishwato mugham Astobha manavadhyancha Sutram sutra vidu viduhu Together. Alpaksharama sandigdham Sajavat vishwato mugham Astobha manavadhyancha Sutram sutra vidu viduhu Sutra, sutra vidaha viduhu Sutra vid knows What? Sutra hmm. Sutra vid, those people who know sutra Know sutra as As what? Alpaksharam one important feature of sutra literature is alpa akshara. Minimum letters possible. Minimum letters possible. They will not be, you know, writing like slokas. One after another, tada, cha, vai, hu, tu, hi, nati. Alpa akshara. Whatever letters are needed, minimum. Asandigdham. Haan. But letters are less, but there should not be any sandigdhada. What is sandigdhada? Doubt. So, asandigdha means without doubt. So, the Sutra Sahitya, although it is Alpakshara, it should be without doubts. Asandigdha. Saravat. The Sutra literature should be Saravat. What is Saravat? Essence. Only essence. But, Vishwato Mukham. The moment you start to you know, explain it, all the aspects which are related to that subject should be should be contained there. Minimum letters, essence. But just this, when the moment you start to decode the sutra, oh, so much of information is is you know, saved. So, vishwato mukham. Then astobham. Astobham means stobharehita. Means in any condition, it will not um, it will not be um, damaged. Damaged means it will always stand its point in any condition. And anavadhyam, anavadhyam that cannot be defeated. You know, a sutra that that will have such a strength in that that nobody will be able to to you know um, defeat or to argue against it. 
So, these are the, these are the qualities of sutram. So, we are going to learn Narada Bhakti Sutra. Okay. You got, all of you got this book, this paper? Yes. You have Gurudev's book also? Yes. Now, what I have done is whenever I teach, I, mean, I teach, I mean, this, the, this Narada Bhakti Sutra uh, is not like the other sutra books. Okay. So, in order to teach, in order to understand, in order to, you know, um, understand it best, better, I rearrange the sutras. Whenever classes are there, little bit rearrangements. Rearrangement is done. So, that's why you see here, you can see different, different topics. On different, different topics, Narada Bhakti Sutras in different, different place, those topics are done. So, we have taken all that into one place. So you see bhakti sarupam parabhakti. The, the nature of bhakti parabhakti. So see when you see that bracket, there is one, one, two, etc. That means the number of the sutra. So whenever you, when you want to read about that sutra, take Gurudev's book and then go to that number. One, two, three, then 51, 52, 53. So if you take the 51st sutra, this will be the sutra. So it's easy for us to. You know, that's why. So, we have rearranged the Narada Bhakti Sutra into in topic wise. So, we start with Bhakti Swarupam, Para Bhakti, then Bhakti Lakshana. Different Acharyas gives Lakshana. Lakshana. Yeah. Characteristics or Lakshana means the uh, definitions. So, Lakshana also means definitions of Bhakti. Then, Udaharana, Udaharana examples. So, whenever you say Lakshanam, then there should be, it should be proven by examples. So, Udaharana. Then, Gauna Bhakti. We heard Para Bhakti and the Gauna Bhakti Sarupa. Then, Bhakti Mahatmya, the greatness of Bhakti. Bhakti Mahatmya. Then, then comes the important thing, Sadhana. What are the sadhanas we should practice in the field of so that is sadhanani then sadhana after sadhana then comes the satsanga as part of actually as a part of uh, sadhana only satsanga and dussanga the importance of good company and the dangers of bad company then actually it's a continuation of the sadhana only next one also maya jaya upaya how can we conquer the maya Next is a very important uh, topic for all of us who are walking and um, studying Vedanta, etc. Jnana and Bhakti. Is Jnana and Bhakti related or are they arch enemies? <laughs> Many people think, oh, no, no, Jnana Bhakti. I meant Jnana. No. So, what is the relationship between Jnana and Bhakti? Then, Bhakta Mahatmya. Not only Bhakti Mahatmya, the Bhakta Mahatmya, the greatness of then phalam. So any shastra, no phalasrudi will be there. So when we take up this this uh, oh, this shastra as the Narada Bhakti Sutra or bhakti, what is the phalam? What is the result we will gain from the practice of bhakti? And then upasana. So all together, eighty-four sutras are there. Um, we'll see how much we can. <laughs> we have a very limited time. So anyhow. How much ever we will be able to cover that we will cover. Okay, anyhow, you have book accepted. So, this is the Narada Bhakti Sutra. Tomorrow we will start. What is Narada Bhakti What is the, the content of Narada Bhakti Sutra? But we have covered so many things so that when we, when we start the class, it becomes much easier. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om